In the workshop, a collection of Stuart model steam engines built by Peter Tan. I'd only ever seen photographs of Peter's engines because he sells on eBay under the name of N.Rat. So when I finally unpack this one, here it is. Stuart models number eight. And very pretty it is too. You have to build these kind of engines to appreciate how much effort goes into making them look like this. Even before the building really begins, cleaning up the castings takes quite a while. It's the detail that matters if you look at all the studs, they're exactly the same length, and this really makes a difference to the appearance. Before I bench test a miniature steam engine, irrespective of how oily it looks, I always make sure that it's lubricated. There's nothing difficult here, I'm just applying some oil to everything that moves. And as always, for general lubrication of miniature steam engines, I use my own mixture comprising of 50% steam oil, 1000 grade, 25% machine oil, I use 3 in 1 for that, and 25% rapeseed oil or canola oil. A few years ago, I did some computer work at an oil refinery in Glasgow, and I found myself speaking to the main man in the laboratory and I asked him which is the best oil additive to reduce friction in bearings. First of all, he went through quite a long list, but then he said, well, actually, the best one of all is possibly one of the oldest additives. It's rapeseed oil. And I looked puzzled. I said, but rapeseed oil, the stuff you buy at the supermarket, and the same stuff that they make biodiesel from, as far as I'm aware. Then he went into great technical detail, and after a while, I did find myself gazing out of the window at the other buildings, wondering which would be the best building to jump off to end it all quickly. Thankfully, though, he finally ran out of words, so I just went back to work, but I always remembered that rapeseed oil is a very good oil additive, and it's available from most supermarkets. The displacement lubricator and the valve with its extension had been dismantled for shipping, so here I'm refitting them temporarily so I can test the engine. In these close-up shots you can really see the quality of the build. So how does it run? Have a look and have a listen. The engine seems to run OK, but the timing is a little bit advanced, really. The admission on this engine at both ends of the stroke is very early. The steam or air is being admitted to the cylinder just a little bit too early for my liking, but I'm not going to do anything about that because my brief at the moment is just to review the engine. The crankshaft is not 100%, but then again, a lot of miniature crankshafts are not 100%. There is a little run out at both ends, you can see it clearly on this clip. As a display engine for part of a collection though, it really does look beautiful. This took me by surprise. The extension for the globe valve just fell off. I didn't bend it or anything, it just literally fell off. And as you can see here, the metal is very thin. The hole at the center is too big and there's insufficient strength where the thread has been cut. And before packaging up the engine to send to my friend in America, I will make a new adapter that is a bit stronger. This problem was not due to over tightening the valve and as you can see the broken part of the thread comes out of the flange just with a small screwdriver. So what can I say about this engine? Well nothing really, it's a very beautiful looking engine and a lot of effort has gone into making it look like this. 
It's a perfect addition to any collection of Stuart Models steam engines. And that's it for this review. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.